from verse 12. What shall I render unto the Lord? For all his benefits towards me, I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of his people. Has he actually done anything for you this year? Yes. 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 We thank the Lord. And I want to bless the Lord because of you. Because if you don't appreciate the benefit and the goodness of the Lord, you will not find time to come into this sanctuary. You will possibly be at Times Square. <laughs> then you have come to the sanctuary of God to honor him, to praise him, to glorify him for his awesome goodness unto you. you this goodness will even be greater in the new year. Yeah. Because you are appreciative of God and of his goodness. By so doing, you are putting Satan to shame. Yes. Your God is not in Times Square. Your God is the sanctuary. You have come to acknowledge him to praise him, to glorify him, and to raise high His Majesty. You will experience greater joy in your 2019. God loves those who love him. He loves those who appreciate. What do I do? I will come into the house of the Lord. I will pick up the cup of salvation. I will go into the world to testify that this God is awesome. Yes. Like the Samaritan woman going into the entire world and coming back to say, I found a prophet, a Messiah, who released all the confidentialities of my life to me. This is what David precisely was saying. He would not swallow this goodness alone. He will go out into the world and show the world, come and see my God. This should be your challenge. And that's why it says, the death of his beloved is precious in his sight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How would the death of the, of the saints be precious in his sight? Because he has the power to stop that sin from dying. But then, there's something greater awaiting for all the saints. Oh. There's something better, something glorious being taken away from the azure of this world, from the problems of this world, from the pains of this world, into the glories and beauties of heaven. God like Paul the Apostle says, to go now to heaven is the profit for me. But to stay alive is the profit for Christ. Because when he's alive, he will go about preaching the gospel and doing good. The death of saints is painful to God. Because who will then be doing that work with the saint was doing when he was in the world? Precisely, there's a vacuum when someone that is righteous lives. And that vacuum is painful to God. Are we saying it's not you per se, it's not me per se that is actually important, but the works of our hand and mindset, our lifestyle. How many people were able to change unto Christ? This is the greatest thing before the Lord. If you say you are righteous, you are pious, you are like an angel, and you see all other people as sinners, you don't even want to smile when they smile. 
When they are laughing, you consider a sin, you withdraw. At the end of the day, you realize you are a very, very unprofitable servant of God. The Lord is not sending you into the world to remain righteous alone. He's sending you to go into the world and send souls unto his kingdom. If you are not mixing with sinners, I will look on that as sinner unto God. If you are condemning idolaters, I will not allow them to see the light in Christ and then turn to Christ. Hey, like I said before, Paul said in I, Galatians, I became lawless. I know I was a lawful person. I was a, a, a very, very a, 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 a law by the citizen, but I needed to become lawless so that I can gain some of those lawless people. I can convert them to God. Because if you want to join a group, I don't pretend to be one of them. You cannot even get inside. And when Jesus came, he wasn't moving with the righteous ones. He was all over in the houses of leopards, of the lambs, of sinners, of fornicators, and was converting them. You are not a saint. You are not an angel. Until you close your eyes, then you know where you belong. The Lord has given you talents to go into the world and make more talents for him. So, brethren in the Lord, go into the world this new year and make yourself a profitable servant. Twenty more minutes to twelve o'clock. We've told you that next year is going to be an eventful year. I don't know whether we should say amen or not. Because you don't know how eventful in what form, in what dimension, what nation. No so down. The great French prophet said something will happen in the year 2012. And said that precisely December 21, the world will come to an end. The Orient said they got a graving, a sort of engraved, engraving message on a stone in an ancient building say watch out for December 21, 2012. From seven different zones, they say the watchful of 2012. I told in September, I saw the chariots moving in the sky. And I saw the four living beings being charged. And I saw the land of Judah himself. Saying he will be standing where I saw him to rapture his own from the four corners of the world during this generation. And I saw the entire world willing. The Lord said, Time. It's time. It's time. It's time. I've taken my decision. There's no going back. The longer I wait, the deeper they go into sin. Then he was revealing a vision shown unto him, standing on the bridge and seeing the entire, the entire world white. Seeing stones coming down from heaven, and one stone carried the paper and he inspected the paper and said, It's almost time. It's almost time. Then thought that it is now time. 
We know that the, the world is not ending next year. But we know that during this generation, the rapture will occur. But certain spectacular things will happen next year. That by standing on the moon with this instrument, something will happen. And only those who take time to serve God, those who keep the commandments of God, those who walk on the tracks of righteousness, will receive the assurance, the insurance and the assurance that they will pass through them. Sadly, through the corridor of 2012, it is an eventful year. It is a tough year. It is a year you have to watch out for. It is a year you must move closer to God. What is coming is divine. The entire might of America cannot protect anybody. What I'm saying, this generation be prepared for rapture. The month, the year, the day, no one knows. But it's going to happen during our own generation. Move closer to God. Withdraw from acts of wickedness. The second lesson is saying, can somebody quickly read that? It's 15 minutes to spend more, about three minutes more. Then the angel showed me the river of the water. The angel showed me the river of water. Of life. Of life. As clear as crystal. As clear as crystal. Flowing from the throne of God. Flowing life. from the throne of God. And of the land. You're living in this water, on this water. There's no sickness again in your life. You cannot die again. You live eternally in the glories and beauties of heaven. Yes. Down the middle of the great street of the city. Yes. On each side of the river. On, on this side of the river. Stood the tree of life. The trees of life. Bearing 12 crops. The trees of life. Bearing 12 different fruits. Yielding its fruits every month. Every month. Yielding 12 different fruits. Every month. Yes. And the leaves of the tree are for healing of the nations. And the leaves of the tree for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. There will be no curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city. The throne of God and of Christ will be among the people. And his servants will serve him. Those who are able to go into the banquet of the Lamb, they will serve God. They will see his face. You will see the face of Christ. You will walk up and down with the angels. The angels will no longer be invisible to you. You will parley with them. You will talk with them. You will mix with them. Amen. You will die with them. Amen. You will never die again. Amen. I will never die again. Amen. Tears will move off completely. Amen. Yes. And his name will be on their foreheads. The name of Christ. You are going to receive new names Amen. into the new earth. Amen. Those 12 fruits, different fruits, represent the 12 tribes of Israel. Because every nation, every individual will be grafted into the 12 tribes of Israel. Whatever the worth of your work, we decide which fruit you are fed with. <laughs> Once you take this fruit, you cannot die again. It's the fruit of the tree of life. But do you want to go into the tribe of Judah that will stay in Zion, the most glorified tribe? Do you want to go in the tribe of Joseph? All depends on your work in this world. Wherever you go to, wherever you end up in, that is where you stay eternally. Some will end up in one room. Some will end up in apartments. Some will end up in mansions. Take a copy 
of this message of today, it will be given to you. Take time to serve God. Obey His commandments. Be charitable. Give, give, and give to the less privileged, to the destitute, to the orphans, to the widow. Give, and give, and give, and give is the greatest thing. And most importantly, love. Take away malice, bitterness, hatred, pride, arrogance away from you. Even if you're sleeping under the throne of God and you still have this, you cannot make it. Today, I beseech you in the name of God, look for those that you are actually fighting with, make peace with them. You can never enter heaven with an unforgiving spirit. I stand on this mountain and I declare to you today, anybody that you think has sinned, offended you, forgive that person. As a wiser person, stretch your hand to that person and bring that person to yourself. Move away from arrogance. Live your life in joy. Live your life in peace with all people. Live your life in love and charity. And believe me, your salvation will be a certainty. Amen. Amen.